Hi everyone, it's Mo Jacks and I'm back in the lab today looking at some new shiny kits. What we've got here is the Novation Launch Key 61. This is a pretty large five octave keyboard, controller keyboard for your PC, your Mac, and also for your iPad. Now, a few months ago, I looked at the Launchpad Mini range, show you the Launchpad Mini, the Launch Key Mini, and the Launch Control from Novation, had them all hooked up to an iPad was brilliant and it's been a really popular video for me loads of people have watched it so i just wanted to look at some of the you know one of the slightly bigger versions in the range um and when i said bigger i said that's an ovation they sent me this which is about as big as you can get um it's massive but it's also still very portable actually it's very very lightweight um you can certainly carry this around with you in terms of the weight of it perhaps not so much in terms of the size but they also do a four octave one 49 key and a 25 key two octave one as well all of which have this selection of extra controls over and above your regular keyboard stuff included the only difference with any of them is that the 25 key the two octave has only got the one slider rather than this full set but yeah in terms of features it's pretty much all set now um it does work really well with Ableton Live. I've been playing with that today on my computer, but really, I think most people are interested in watching the, the iPad kind of stuff. So I'm gonna focus on that, and I can't really record both at the same time. It's a, it's a big hassle. Um, so I'm just gonna focus on the iPad stuff really. Where there's interesting stuff about the DAW control, I will mention that as we go through. So let's get to it, basically. Let's get cracking. Now, um, as I say, it's a nice lightweight thing. It is plastic, you know, the whole thing is plastic. It's not designed to be you know, used and abused on the road uh, like some much more expensive controllers, but then this is only about 160 quid here in the UK. Um, the, the 49 key is 140 quid and the 25 is about 100 quid. So they're very, very good value in terms of what you're getting. And yeah, you're not gonna expect a full on metal chassis thing and uh, you know, for 100, 160 quid. It's not gonna happen really. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, the regular key sort of setup. You've got all the keys there. They are nice feel, nice full size sort of keys. Um, they're not after touch on there. Again, that would add massively to the price, but they are velocity sensitive properly. You really play them like a proper piano, like a proper keyboard. I can't, I have no keyboard ability whatsoever. So don't expect any Jules Holland like virtuoso business going on here. It's not gonna to happen today. Um, you've got the mod wheel. So modulate your parameters. You've got the pitch bend uh, up and down and so on. The other stuff is kind of more software dependent. So I'm gonna to get to that now. Let's have a look now. It's uh, just got a USB port on the back there and you've got a sustain pedal input on a jack and you have got a, you know, you could run a power supply with this as well. It is fully bus powered though with either the iPad or with the computer. So you don't need that power supply. Uh, so what we do, we get the USB hooked into the back of it first of all. And then we need to hook into the camera connection kit. So bear in mind that you will this won't charge your iPad in any way. You can't hook it up to the mains and charge your iPad. The camera connection kit just doesn't allow that, unfortunately. Um, that's one of the restrictions of the Apple stuff. It's, it's a real pain, but you know, if you want to use an iPad, you've got to deal with that sort of thing. So get that in the camera connection kit. One thing to point out, I tried it with this uh, third party camera connection kit and it didn't work. Um, it did when I put a USB hub on and powered it and so on, but it did work then. But this thing alone wouldn't power it. So. Unfortunately, it looks like you might have to deal with the genuine Apple one. Apple always get you with that stuff, but there you go. So we've connected it up. It's come to life there, you can see. And obviously the natural thing to use this with is Novation's own apps, the launch key and the launch pad apps. So let's get those open. Okay, so we fire up the launch key app from Novation. It's a free app, comes with it. There's more detailed look at these two apps, the launch pad and the launch key in the video I did about the other Novation units. So that's worth checking out. I'm gonna mostly stick to how this interacts with it as a controller today. Um, so we've got immediately, it's making noise. Now this is obviously yeah, your full keyboard control there, but you can go further with the octave button. So you can go up or down, octave one at a time. And if you hold down both at once, you can transpose up a semitone as well so full control over the notes that you're going to get out of this thing uh, obviously your mod wheel is in play and your pitch wheel as well so that's all fantastic to use now up here you've got the track buttons on when it's connected to the ipad that's going to open the launch pad app as well 
um, as well as the launch keys. You can go between the two with controls on the actual unit itself, which is great. Um, you can also hold down both and change the MIDI channel. Uh, that's especially useful if you're hooked up to a PC or whatever, you want a different MIDI channel uh, being sent out, then you can do that. Always defaults to one every time you power it up as a rule. Now in the launch, you've got the different ADSR controls. So you've got the amplitude, attack, decay, sustain and release. And then the same for modulation on all of these faders there and they're set automatically. Now we get across and that's your master volume there on number nine. Now, one thing you will notice, we've got these in control buttons here. Now what that means is you can basically tell these to control it or not. So in this case, I've now hit that off and it says faders are no longer in control. And then it doesn't matter what I do with those, only the master volume will do anything. The rest of them will do nothing. So you can assign those to other apps quite simply. And when you've got it connected up to your computer, what you can do is have that say in Ableton Live, you can have the standard control, which is volume faders for your different tracks. And you can just turn that off and immediately you've got then MIDI mappable parameters there as well. And that does your mutes at the bottom. But you can, so you've got two layers of control basically across this whole unit, which is really, really quite useful with no sort of hassle, shift buttons or anything like that. It's all just very straightforward, very easy to do. And same thing goes for the knobs and the pads as well. So what we've got on the pads over here, they are nice feeling pads. They are nice and solid. You feel like you can really hammer on those. They are not velocity sensitive, but they are a really good, nice sort of squidgy feel when you really push down on them, which is great. And on here, that's your favorites at the top. So we've got favorite patches in the app. So we can just change through your favorites and to assign a new favorite. So I like this one, number five. And I tweak my parameters the way I want. I can then hold that one down, save it to number five, and that will save it for me. Again, as much as possible happening here on the unit itself without touching the iPad or your computer. Really, really good. Uh, at the bottom, you've got different variations of each preset that you've got saved. So they're all different options to use. And these two you've got, these are your transport controls when it's with your DAW, but on the iPad or on these apps in particular, you can scroll up or down your different presets so we can just go through the list. Just try them all out as you go through and preview that way. Uh, the controls at the top are your actual knobs that are on the screen. You can see those on the screen moving with it. That's your resonance, for example, and they're automatically assigned. Again, unless you turn them off like so, in which case they no longer do anything and you can assign those to something else. So yeah, that's that two layers coming into play. On the launch key app, you've got the uh, arpeggiator. You can either have it on or off, and you can also make it loop and latch rather. So there you go. Off it goes, and again, we'll just stop that arpeggiator like so. So yeah, your full base is covered really. Now I was saying those two, those track buttons there do open up the other ones. We've got the launch pad up. Let's get that open as well. It's gonna open that up for me as well. Nice and straightforward. And this obviously is the one that contains all your loops and your samples, your one shots and that sort of thing. And that's all there. And you see the pads have all changed up over here. So we're now we've got our different bits there. Let's turn those up. So we've got volume controls. These are now defaulted to volume controls for each one. Fade them in and out. And that's your filter assigned to the knobs. So this launch pad up becomes really, really, really hands-on. Just filter, and you can do levels really nicely. That really does work for me. And then the bottom one turns on your effects. Like beat masher, big roll kind of thing. Perfect. And then we've got the up and down to go down through. So you'll see if we get that one started down there. You can see now that started one on the sixth row. That come up here and start one on the fourth row. So you can navigate your whole set. Now obviously 
Again, I went over this in my other video, but you can have your own samples assigned in there now. You do, that's an uh, in-app purchase you have to do, but it will accept your own samples. You can make an entire sort of live set, a remix set, whatever you want, just using your iPad. It's, it's, it's really quite a cool bit of software. And then we can just hit that again, and we go back into the launch key. Uh, just pick a new preset. And obviously these two apps are both running in time, running together. And I've immediately got control over these parameters back in the launch key app. We'll go back again to the launch pad. Change parameters in there back and forth, really, really straightforward. Love it. Now what I will do, I'll just uh, come back to, let's stop that arpeggiator there. Well, I'll just come back to just explain a little bit more about how these work in Ableton Live. I haven't used it with other, other DAW software. You know, I'm an Ableton user, that's what I use. So I just use it with that and it worked really well. Now, uh, when you've got this in control mode assigned, then this does your clip launching. This top row will launch the clips and the second row will stop the clips. And you've also got uh, scene launch and stop all in there as well. You can go up and down the clips using the up and down there. Uh, play, pause, and loop are your actual sort of transport controls for Ableton, so they all work really nicely. Comes with a copy of Live Lite 9 in the box, so if you don't have that, uh, also comes with Novation's base station and a few other bits in there as well. So, you know, it's a full package that you're getting through money, 160 quid, you're going to get the lot in here, really. Um, and it also in Ableton, if you've got the in-control assigned, then these will do your devices. So if you're on, say, a drum rack or a synth, um, set up, you can tweak parameters in that. It automatically just works for you. You basically set it up as a remote uh, within Ableton Live and it just does it all together with no no sort of intervention on your part. It just does it straight away. Uh, I mentioned already about the faders and if you turn that in control stuff off, then that becomes your drum pads or your drum racks in Ableton. And so that will work really nicely. And these are all just MIDI assignable. So you've got like two layers there, all really, really sweet. So there we have it, the Launch Key 61 from Novation. It's a cool bit of kit. It's very big, but it is lightweight, so it's very portable. You can carry it around from room to room. You can stash it away in a cupboard and pull it out again really easily without any hassle. You can plug into your iPad and just get going in seconds, just making music with your iPad wherever you are. It's really, really good from that point of view. Also, seamless integration with stuff like Ableton Live, Cubase, Logic, etc. So it's got a lot to offer. I mean, one thing that's got me thinking about this today is that Christmas, my dad bought my mum a keyboard. She used to play piano, so she wanted to get back into playing a keyboard a bit. And he bought like a Casio thing, you know, with the built-in bossa nova drum sounds and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, cool, you know, it's, it's great that she wants to do that, but she's sitting there with her headphones on. And I'm now thinking, well, if she had one of these, that's gonna let her do that, but it'll also let her use, say, GarageBand, so she can record her on the iPad, so she can record her, her playing, um, she can play along to a beat or anything else like that as well. Because this integrates, you know, this will work fine with GarageBand, with Animoog, with basically any software on the iPad that will accept a mini, uh, a MIDI controller or MIDI keyboard. This will work with that. It doesn't have to be just tied to the Novation apps. As good as those are, you can really use this with anything. So I think for people who just want to play some music and just get into some music and, and you know have a go at making their own music, something like this is absolutely ideal. So there you go that's the launch key 61 thank you very much for watching today i hope you've enjoyed it if you have please do subscribe on uh, mojax vdj is my channel on youtube and uh, do leave any comments or questions and i'll try and help you out with those thank you very much for watching bye bye